season after a full regular season of football. Tom in studio with us. How's that working out? Great. ESPN has been a terrific partner. We couldn't have done it without them. And after one season to have them help us out with all the national broadcasts as well as help us with scheduling to make it happen this year and into the future. You can see that uh, more and more of these games are getting a little better and we're getting some home games and it, the uh, schedule will get better every year. There was some talk the last couple of months of, of joining this conference or maybe joining that conference and what BYU might have to give up is that ESPN relationship, but that's proving to be pretty solid. It's a great relationship, and even though we're on TV all the time, we always look to the future about what we can do and what can help us advance to be the best football program that we can be. But we have a great deal with ESPN and strong ties, strong relationships that go way back to Coach Edwards, and we plan on making the most of them in the future. You ready to uh, break down some film? Let's go. Former defensive star Tom Homo now. <laughs> what do you think of this Cougar D? And as you see these young guys running around making plays, you used to make those kind of plays. How fun has it been for you? It's been fun to watch this team. I don't think they're a team of stars. The defense has some players that together as a team, they're better than the individual. But the, I really like Kyle Van Oy. He's a playmaker. He's the one guy on the team that is very poised all the time. You rarely see him out of position, and then he picks and chooses his times when he's going to come up with a big play. But we got some young guys like Jordan Johnson, who just made that interception, who are going to come and step in, Daniel Sorensen. I think we have a lot of players that will be back in next year. Younger guys will have a chance to play, start for two or three years, and that's where you get your strength. If you had to line up your defensive team against this defensive team, how would they compare? Well, this defensive team is bigger, faster, stronger, more athletic. We, we did great things back then, but I think when you compare eras, and I was here 30 years ago. <laughs> um, I was a kid it, in the stands <laughs> watching you play. It, it's hard to compare those two far apart, but I, I like what these kids do. They're very athletic. And this year, I, I like the fact that even though it's kind of a bend but don't break um, theory to play defense, they're resilient and they make the most of their situations and they've played well enough to win nine games. Go to the uh, Armed Forces Bowl now against a team that uh, very similar to BYU. They're averaging 30 some points a game. Seems like the defense will have to take that bend but not break attitude into Dallas. Well, Tulsa is a, has an offense that's explosive. They run that spread, they get you into open positions and that's an area where when they spread it out, we're gonna have to play man coverage or we're going to be in situations we might be in a zone but you have to be very athletic to be able to match up in those man situations we'll be in situations where it's all every man for himself and you got to do your very best you'll be in Dallas tomorrow with Bronco Mendenhall to kind of kick start the bowl season how do folks still get tickets to that it's a stadium that seats only 32,000 but but there are some options to get in yeah, you can still get your tickets through uh, the BYU ticket office at the Marriott Center, or you can go right down to the stadium at Ford Stadium on the SMU campus. But there still are tickets available. We play another game in Texas. We're going to have to start paying taxes there. Well, it's our third game down there this year. We really like that. The fans down there have been great. The football's always great. The recruits down there, it's a great opportunity for us. So we're really looking forward to this. This week you announced Washington State will open the season in Provo uh, next September, which is just a few months away. They come in, a Pac-10 team that you've had your eye on in scheduling. Georgia Tech was kind of earmarked for that opener at home, at least according to all the national services. What happens to that game, and, and how do you see the schedule coming? That together? Georgia Tech game will just slide down a little bit. It's interesting. When we have contracts with games, we like to announce them, but often, as you can tell <laughs> as an independent, you do a little maneuvering to slide a team in that might have an opening. And I'm so grateful for the teams that we have scheduled in 2012 that have given us a little bit of movement. And a team like Georgia Tech moved for us so that we could get Washington State. And a couple other teams had to slide around a little bit. But we're very close. There's one team that we're just trying to, we have them in, but we're just kind of trying to solidify the date. And I know you've been working hard to try and beef up November, if at all possible, if not next season. November's beyond. How's that coming? Well, 11 and 12, we knew right off the bat when you have two year home and home schedules, we had an agreement with the WAC and we ha will have those. So after 2012, we don't have that scheduling contract with the WAC anymore. So you'll see different teams coming in here. But 2012 is a better, con uh, better schedule. 
a few teams at the end. We'll be on the road a little bit more at the end of the season and not at home. But 2013 will probably be one of the very best and toughest schedules we've ever seen. 2012, you're tough on the road, especially it'll be good to have a, a senior quarterback like Riley who's come along and, and that'll be a, a much different approach into a season. It will. Uh, I think that the best years that we've had at BYU, as history has shown, is when you have a senior quarterback. You can go all the way through back the years and, and I'm looking forward to, and I know our BYU fans are, to see where Riley goes from this year through the bowl game into 2012. Well, we can't escape the state of Texas this week, so you're in Texas tomorrow, and then you come home, we've got the best basketball team in Texas coming to town for a high noon mountain start on Saturday with Baylor as the athletic director, seeing a full arena and a marquee opponent draw it up pretty nicely here. Well, it's great to be able to see opponents of the caliber of Baylor come into the Marriott Center. It's one thing to be able to get teams of that caliber in football and basketball on the road, but to have them come to Provo, play in Lavelle Edwards Stadium, or in this case in the Marriott Center, it's wonderful. I know our students will be camping out to get the best tickets for that game. <laughs> well, your staff has been working to, to sell that out because of, one, because of the, the magnitude of the opponent, but the opportunity also to win that game and get BYU in the top 25. Well, you can see BYU right now has a very good team. I think early on people weren't quite sure, but we're playing consistent, strong basketball. I think Noah Hartsock has surprised a lot of people with how well he's played and consistently. And now we'll get to measure up against the top well, six teams. So when you play someone like that, you find out whether you're really, really good or just pretty good. Well, Matt Carlino is going to get some playing time on Saturday. We know his head coach uh, is really interested. What about the coach's boss? <laughs> well, I let Dave do all the coaching. <laughs> People are asking me how much will Matt play. That'll be a decision for Dave and his staff. But I know Matt's going to play. And he's been with the team for a year practicing. Yeah. But just because of the eligibility of when he comes in, happens to be this Saturday is when he gets to start or start off playing. And he'll play plenty in this game. Hey, it's a big week. Thanks, Tom. Great. Thank Tom you very Hall, much. Tom Holwell, athletic director.